No Mo May, which is just very, very briefly, just finish off the program. It's about us not mowing our lawns during May, but to encourage insects, to encourage birds, to encourage biodiversity during springtime when things are flourishing, plants are coming out, animals and insects are starting to thrive. Uh, going back to you know, what we talked about earlier in the program, we can do our bit. And we can do our bit by just even at least little things. I know it's nice to look out on your garden and you've freshly mowed. And it's nice and tidy. But we're actually, I know it's quite you know crude here, but we're actually devastating biodiversity every time we turn our, our mowers on. But it's not about not mowing for the whole summer or whatever. It's just about saying May. We're not going to do it for May. Just like, you know, people don't shave their moustaches in November for, you know, cancer, alleviating prostate cancer. We can do the same here in, in, in May and encouraging, you know, the butterflies, the ladybirds, uh, everything, even worms. You know, they're such an important part of our day-to-day -day biodiversity experience. Yeah. To be fair, Jace, I might extend it into June and July. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine these conversations up and down the country with couples, uh, you know, couples saying, isn't it time you mowed the lawn? And, and the other person responding, you know, look, do you want me to mow the lawn or do you want a habitable planet for our grandchildren? Absolutely. That's yeah. No, I mean, a great initiative. And we're seeing this up and down the country, rewilding uh, initiatives, councils as well as ordinary people, uh, you know, uh, taking on these, these new initiatives about rewilding, about not, not always cutting and trimming down uh grassy grassy areas and encouraging birds and bees uh, butterflies wasps and, and all sorts of insects and animals on on whom our life depends um, you know and particularly the birds and the bees in terms of pollination ultimately they pollinate our crops which feed us so around the world the, the destruction of the bee population is a very very serious issue for humanity um and we've got to protect you know the bees and wasps and other forms of wildlife. So a great, a great initiative, and it's nice to see lots of local people uh, embracing it, and also starting, uh, you know, their own sort of uh, green initiatives, growing their own food organically, and yeah. and so forth, and creating, uh, you know, nice areas. Even in town centres, they're creating sort of green areas and yes. ur urban, um, urban, uh, um, you, you know, uh, projects grow their own food and, and so yeah. forth um, which is yeah it's great to see great yeah. to see brilliant it's just a thing there's a thing also uh, just to say also about you know we've got to also move away from the use of glyphosate from chemicals um which yes may may help ag agriculture big agriculture to to create food quicker and faster and more profitably more profitably um but ultimately are, 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 you know glyphosate fates have been found in court in America to cause cancer, you know, and things like weed, weed killer actually found in court to cause cancer. And uh, it's quite extraordinary that, you know, Monsanto that are the biggest producers of glyphosate weed killers, uh, both for commercial and, and uh, agricultural and, and sort of home use. Um, they were bought by Bayer, a German company a few years ago. And one of the things that Bayer does is produce cancer drugs. So now the company that produces cancer drugs also makes the the um, the weed killer that can give us cancer. Yet, yet another example of the ludicrousy of capitalism. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a great initiative. So come on, everyone. No mo May and maybe June and July too. Too right. Too right. And I